Hi everybody, in this video we are going to create a seamless tile like this. The good thing about these tiles is that they are seamless, so we can tile them next to each other like this to make a big surface. I want you to first watch this video and then make your own seamless tile. You can do something similar to what I'm doing, or if you like you could do your own seamless tile. For example you could make bricks, or granite, or muddy or whatever you want, some kind of surface. If you're looking for inspiration you could just search for old games like the old Mario game or old Sonic game or whatever to find some ideas of what you might draw. Okay, let's get started. First of all we are going to pick a brush preset. Go to the brush presets dialog and pick the brush pixel art fill. You can use this drop down menu to filter the brushes to see only pixel art brushes. Make sure layer 1 is selected. This is a layer we're going to draw on. And then use the advanced color selector to pick a color. So I'm going to pick a nice, not too saturated, not too dark brown. Picking the right color takes a bit of practice. So I, as I mentioned before, there's a lot of color theory out there. But right now I think the best thing to do is just pick a color which you like, and that way you will start building up experience in your in selecting colors. So for the base color, I don't want something too light, too dark, or too saturated. I'm going to rename this layer. Just select the layer and press F2. Then I'm going to add another layer and I'm going to name it Palette. And I'm going to add one more layer and I'm going to name it Rough Sketch. So first of all I'm going to hide this base color layer and then I'm going to the palette layer and here I'm going to put some of the colors that I want to be using for shading and highlighting. And of course I'm going to include the base color here too. When it comes to picking a shading and highlighting color I'm going to make my own life easy. I'm going to make use of the so-called blending modes screen and multiply. So first of all I'm going to temporarily set my brush to screen. Screen means I will use the currently selected color to add light to what I've already painted. I'm going to pick more or less the same color but I'm going to shift the hue a little bit to the right. So it's a bit complicated but in essence I'm just using this new color to lighten the base color. You can think of it kind of like shining a light onto what we already have painted on the canvas. So this is quite a common and effective way of picking your highlighting and shading colors. Quick summary is first you pick your base color and then shift the hue a little bit. Generally people shift towards the yellow or red side when they're doing highlights because that's a bit warmer and they shift a bit to the blue side or the cold side when they're doing shadows. And then set your pen mode either to screen or to multiply and then draw on top of the base color to get the desired shading and highlighting colors. If you're new to digital painting then this might be quite a lot to remember but don't worry but just apply it once or twice and then you'll easily remember after that. Let's quickly use the eraser to erase this part which we don't need. Next we're going to do the exact same thing to pick our shading color, but we're not going to use screen, we're going to use multiply. I'm going to shift the color a little bit to the blue side of the spectrum. Let's set the brush to multiply. Multiply is just like screen, but instead of lightening it darkens. And then we erase this part. Next I'm moving on to making my rough sketch. I'm going to probably do it in blue, a color completely different. Don't forget to put the pen mode back to normal. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw some stones. Drawing a seamless tile is a bit tricky because on the one hand we want some natural variation. We don't want all the stones and rocks to be the same size of course because that would look just weird. And on the other hand we don't want one particular rock or one area which really stands out because when we tile it, 
it's going to be super obvious that it's a repeating pattern and we don't want it to be super obvious. So we want some random variation, but we want the overall variation to be quite uniform. And of course, I also want to make sure that it's seamless. So in order to make sure that it's seamless, we go to view wraparound mode. And when you do that, you see that it kind of infinitely duplicates all these tiles and tiles them up next to one another. You can zoom in and out using the mouse wheel. Remember, it's quite important to zoom in and out quite often because especially when you're drawing pixel art, it can be super easy to get lost inside each individual pixel and forget about how the picture looks as a whole. So I'm just going to continue working on my rough sketch for a bit. Okay, let's start shading. I'm going to take my rough sketch layer and I'm going to move it below my shading layer. You can easily do that by clicking and dragging. We're going to start with the easiest part of shading and that's occlusion. Occlusion is basically the parts where the light doesn't reach like the small cracks or in this case the really narrow parts between the stones. So be careful, don't mix up a, the term occlusion with the term ambient occlusion, that's a different thing. When I say the word occlusion, I'm just talking about the very small parts of the like cracks and creases of your clothes and whatever, which don't catch any light. In fact, I'm going to rename this layer from shading to occlusion. I think that would be better. And then I'm going to add one more layer named shading. And then I'm going to hide everything except for the palette so I can easily access my shading color. So when it comes to shading, that's where it's very important to think about basic forms. In this case, uh, I'm thinking that my pebbles are more or less spheres. Uh, so that's why I'm going to have to shade them like this. So I'm going to apply what I know about shading spheres to shading these pebbles, which are not exact spheres, but they're kind of irregular spheres. But I'm just going to use my imagination to add a little bit of irregularity. Remember, don't be shy with using Ctrl Z. It's kind of an iterative procedure. So you draw some pixels and then you evaluate and then you're like, ah, I'm not really happy with that. And then you do it again. So don't think you have to get everything right by in one time. Just just do it a couple of times and slowly and steadily you'll get a feel for it. And then I'm going to do exactly the same for the highlights. So now when I zoom out, it looks something like this. Pretty good, but as you can see, it still needs some touch-ups. So just to simplify things, I'm going to merge these three layers together. I, I can right click on the layer and select merge or as a shortcut, what I'm going to do is I'm going to press Ctrl E to merge the currently selected layer with the layer below. And I'm going to make some minor adjustments to both the shading and the highlighting and also to the occlusion. <laughs> So that's it. <clears throat> now it's your turn. Now I want you to make a seamless tire. 
try to more or less follow the steps that I've shown you here. And if you like, you can draw the same thing as what I've drawn. But a better learning experience would be for you to draw your own thing. Just remember, don't be a perfectionist and don't get discouraged if it doesn't turn out exactly as you expect it or as you like. Remember, if we are right now in the learning phase, we're only going to get better and better. Okay, good luck. See you next time. Bye bye.